Let it sit with you. I don't ask you to believe me, but I do ask you to look at the biblical texts and replace flesh with alien slave technology and replace spirit with freedom to live from the eternal consciousness and love of God. And there you will see it, that what Jesus was saying with Lucifer and the fall of man is what many human beings today with a different language are saying. beautiful family. I hope you're all having a blessed weekend at the moment, mindful, peaceful. I know I am indulging in exactly that in amongst the period of great chaos in my story and walk with God. As I walk in this chaos, I recognize the pull of the body, the pull of the mind to, to make me function in a different state of consciousness, to move in a state of consciousness that's not eternal, to look at the world from a state of consciousness like the world is where it all is, instead of moving from a consciousness with the higher ideals of something more powerful, potent, something more meaningful than that. And so this ties in with my recent videos where I shared that I'd had this communication with another worldly force, a, a different species and a different frequency, a higher dimensional species, uh, alien species, however we are going to call it. I also, after that video, spoke about pulling together the notion that perhaps the need for rebirth or awakening or enlightenment comes off the back of a genetic interference by an alien species in the human body. And that genetic interference has separate us, separated the species from the presence of God. And so I want to take that a second with you and ask the question, what if the human body is an alien slave technology? What if that is so? Because many persons in the world, they are very far down that rabbit hole in life. And it's beautiful to try and work out the origins of the vehicle that we are in. But is it not better to know the origins of the one in the vehicle? And so, I share this for those who do that, who are in that sphere, but miss a key component. So let us briefly for a moment throw this language over what we are pointing at. As I've said before, these are not flowers. These are happening and arising of bio matter, consciousness, vibration, color, light. It, it, it's this arising here now that words cannot really contain, but can point at it. But if you look at it with the words you point and see the words that you point, you kill the moment. You, 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 you stop the experience of what you're seeing. And so words do that. So let us use words as we are and looking at the situation we are in with our human body and the spirit that we have. Let us use this perception. Imagine, just for a moment, put down all of your other perceptions and imagine this one as a game of make-believe like you would with your child. An alien force came here and genetically interfered with a pre-existing humanoid to create a slave technology that is the human vehicle that we are living in. That technology is so advanced and out of our sphere of understanding as an intellect that it dragged into it the 
consciousness, the soul, the awareness that we are. And in dragging it in, it creates this immense conflict because the technology is, is programmed and wired to make us see through the perception of that slave technology. To see through the perception not of the spirit, not of the soul, not of the eternal, but of that technology. Now we can look and say, why would that technology be made? Is it so we can physically work? Or is it something else? Is it energetic? Is it that by calling into matter, calling into this technology, into this density, this dimension of reality, that higher energy, the soul, the awareness that we are, by calling that in and making it amnesic of its origin, because it's so tangled up in the programming of the technology, that that creates an energetic friction that is used by the very same species that engineered the technology to begin with. Throw that over, just for now. Because we are then left with a conundrum. That we are in this, in this theoretical language approach to the world, to the situation. We are inside an alien slave technology. And those of us who awaken have somehow breached from within as our true self, as our soul. We have backwards engineered the technology from within to awaken, to touch on enlightenment, to be reborn, as Jesus said. And so however fascinating this topic is, and persons want to go off and look at it, and, and there is substance to it, there's immense substance to it. The book of Ezekiel uh, has clearly what would possibly be the arrival of alien astronauts, humanoids, who are aliens or astronauts dressed in white linen. The book of Kings describes what sounds like a chariot of fire, like a spaceship taking off. When you look at this, there were many elements that can point in our history towards this being a possibility. The Popol Vuh, the Sumerian creation, the Epic of Gilgamesh, all points to something potentially like this. Very interesting. But if you acknowledge that then what you are doing by following that line of investigation is you are often satiating the technology you are living via the technology. Now, some of us need to do that to awaken one another. But if you get too tangled up in there and you lose track of the truth, that what I am saying was taught and acknowledged by Jesus using different words. I will call the human body, not that I dislike it. This is a gift. I can bring the divine love into this dimension with this body. I'm so grateful for that. It's beautiful. But this body has its own ways. It has its own desires. I am saying in this theoretical stance, I am throwing the words over alien slave technology over the human body. And uh, let's call freedom spirit, awakening, freedom, is living from the Godhead, living from the pull of the consciousness that acknowledges the eternal, not the consciousness that lives by the finite and the world and what it sees. The consciousness of the technology is the consciousness of just this life and not thinking beyond it. The consciousness of the eternal draws in these higher emotions and this higher love to express here through the body. The consciousness of the technology lives through fear and tries to sustain itself and, and protect itself. Who else said that? They may not have said alien slave technology and they may not have said freedom. But in the Bible, there are endless references to spirit and flesh. Galatians 5.17 
for the desires of the flesh are against the spirit, and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to keep you from doing things you want to do. Romans 8.13 For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Ephesians 4.22 To put off your old self which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires of flesh and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. What part of us is righteous and holy? Is the soul, the loving awareness that we are that permeates all things? What part of us is corrupt? It's the flesh or the alien slave technology, as many are calling it. Freedom from that technology is the spirit. When you look at this correlation, what Jesus was saying, the spirit is where we must move. The flesh is where we are destroyed. The flesh sets its mind upon carnality. The spirit sets its mind upon a, a more expanded consciousness of, of love and care and empathy and compassion. The flesh can't do that. The flesh tries with its fear to survive by any means. It has no trust, no faith. It looks to the things of the world. It, it looks for trinkets, for materiality to sustain itself and its fragility. The spirit does not do that. The spirit seeks the fruits of the spirit, the joy, the thanksgiving, the tenderness, the honesty, the truth. The flesh is enmity to that. The fall of man is what caused, according to the scripture, mankind to become separated from spirit and into the flesh. We became carnal. If that is spiritual and you call it Lucifer, so be it. Put that to one side. For those of you who are researching that aliens are the origin of our human species, it's the same story. The fall of man is engineered inside of us. It is technologically engineered into the humans that we are manifesting within that we are arriving in this dimension within. For we do arrive in these human bodies. We arrive. The soul arrives. If you read about the point where the pineal gland develops in a fetus and you read the Tibetan Book of the Dead, it says the soul enters the body at exactly scientifically the same time that the body grows its pineal. And so we are something beyond the body. The body's a gift nonetheless, but we are beyond it. We're more than that. But right now we are having a human experience and we must acknowledge that and honor that and value that. But we must not be driven by the human side. We must be driven by the connection to the eternal consciousness. So if you are looking into this, you face the conundrum, the, the fact, that the result is exactly the same. The human is enslaved. The human is slave alien technology, the human vehicle. Let's use that. It's the fallen human according to biblical terms. How do you escape that? You must give your life back over to the spirit. To be the reborn into the Holy Spirit. To awaken, to enlighten. To the nowness that drives you forward in compassion. And how do you do that? Because the technology has made us feel. Rumi said, you are not a drop in the ocean, you are the whole ocean in a drop. When you understand this, the human body as a technology, if we stay with this analogy, has created the perception that we are a drop of water in an ocean, but we are wrapped in plastic and feel separate from it. 
And that plastic wrap is the person that the technology has constructed inside your mind. If I take a technology today and place it in one of these trees, so it has a capacity to form an image, it has a capacity to have memory, it has a capacity for language, and therefore it can move its awareness away from the expansive connectivity to nature and its arising as an expression of that onto this technology. It doesn't mean there's a person in the tree. It doesn't mean that. This is the technology that must be backwards engineered. Buddha spoke of it, Jesus spoke of it, the, the Vedas speak of it, the Upanishads, it's all there. And if you throw this, this language over it, instead of fallen one in Lucifer, you say alien species who are trying to escape existence by technological advancement, but they ran out of energy. So they needed to seed away to make energy, so they created an alien slave technology that would drag into it consciousness and souls and separate that from the presence and alignment with God, which makes the friction that suffering feeds them. Because that suffering, it happens by taking away elements of the divine and bringing it into their world. Their world of material pursuit through technology to escape it. And they generate energy. And just as a human drives their car and bashes into bugs on the road, they don't care because they're just going to their destination. They see us like those bugs on the bonnet of their car. They don't care because they're just going to their destination and we are fodder. When you look at it, if you are in this realm of research, the answer is the same. You must be reborn. And to be reborn, you must inner engineer away from the technology that is making you form an image of a person inside you and making the understanding that you are unified and one with all intellectual. You need to take away the plastic from around the drop you are. You need to take away the person take away the intellectual understanding that you are one with all and be one with all and there you command great power because there you command great love because there you feel connected to great love and joy and there your vibration comes to the very heights that it can whereas when you live in the flesh your vibration is low and this higher force then has dominion over you can direct you but when your vibration is at the very heights of all it can be, the voice that you hear is that of our loving source, that eternal, powerful, saturating love and the voice that it, it brings to the world through human beings and through the hearts of humans and through the minds of humans. Jesus was using a different type of language. But he was saying the same thing. If you have gone off into alien research, Jesus was saying the same thing. He was saying that you must be in the spirit, not in the flesh. And if you're in alien research as the origin of human species, you must be escaping the alien slave technology that is the human body. And you must arise, born again, in the eternal consciousness, in freedom. If you reread the Bible, every time it says flesh, put in its place alien slave technology. Every time it says spirit, put in its place freedom to live from the eternal consciousness and love of God. And you will see, you will see that your hour we're out of this is present and then of course it expands to ask the question as it says in the bible all of those in spirit are the sons of god all of those in spirit are the children of god when you walk in spirit you are a child of god it's said in the bible when you move in spirit, the voice of God can direct you. 
It may raise the question, out of curiosity, who was Jesus? Was Jesus the Son of God, or was he a higher dimensional being who knows God epically well as his Son, who came here to undo the programming that the Old Testament mixture of monstrosity had placed upon us? You know, the Old Testament God somehow is not the same as the new. The Old Testament God needed virgins and cattle. Jesus, he came with a totally different message. He didn't need that. So I will leave it there. Because I think it's important that we acknowledge that no matter how you are throwing words, you are pointing at something. And what you are pointing at is that somehow this human body is dragging us away from the divine within us. This human body is, is pulling our souls into a different state of consciousness. And we must elevate through fasting, through prayer, to teach this body, to make this body know, to make our awareness so certain, to escape the programming of the slave technology 100%, to be totally clear that I am not this body. I am the eternal residing within this body. And of course, if you wonder why didn't the ancients say this, they did. The Nag Hammadi said the Archons came, the Archon created the human species and this reality and dragged into it the Sophia, which is the soul of the human consciousness. <laughs> this is not new. Let it sit with you. I don't ask you to believe me, but I do ask you to look at the biblical texts and replace flesh with alien slave technology and replace spirit with freedom to live from the eternal consciousness and love of God. And there you will see it, that what Jesus was saying with Lucifer and the fall of man is what many human beings today with a different language are saying. The only difference is today it's getting lost and we're not focusing on the freedom. We're engaging the technology to look more. But if you let go of the technology, let go of the character and the image it's given you, you'll arise in the spirit and then you will see what your path is. And it may not be to continue looking, to continue trying to understand the past. Because in my experience it was to bring love and to heal the very real experience of the suffering that persons are experiencing in this human form today. Be it through the getting lost in the carnality, or be it through the physical struggle for survival that our species is still in. Whichever way you look, the love of God is the answer. God bless guys, be well.